Okay, so on the 20th, we saw a new release of basically all KDE apps. This includes the last, I don't know, four months of development on any app, so it's a big deal. That said, let's check out what is exactly new. What is new exactly? I don't know. Let's start with a spectacle. The entire application was completely redesigned from scratch. Also now has screen recording out of the box. Developer Noah Davis put a tremendous amount of work into it and the application now shines. This is the application itself, which is now in QML and has consistent and pretty header area. The right column has a screenshot and recording section. The screenshot one you already know, but the recording section allows you to select what to record, all screens, one screen or one window, and also what file extension to save in. This is the first big change. The second big change is when you do a screenshot of a screen area. Previously you'd press enter and go back to the application, but now you see all the screenshot options directly underneath the selected area, and you get all the image annotation tools directly exposed there, which makes it so much easier to actually go ahead and add fake mustaches on other YouTubers, something that I do all the time. Dolphin. Finally, finally, you can run Dolphin as root, allowing you to edit system files too. Kind of. The functionality, which is quite dangerous if you don't know how to use it, is actually disabled by default and works through a Dolphin plugin called Kio Admin, which moves the security burden on the Kio framework rather than on Dolphin itself. I know it's not as easy as just typing sudo Dolphin on the console, but that command does explain to you how to enable the plugin. If you own Apple iOS devices, Dolphin now supports natively navigating its files through the AFC protocol something that unluckily I'm not able to test out given that I'm legally not allowed to be within 100 meters of any iOS device. Funnily enough, the official announcement here says despite these added features, Dolphin has not become slower. Wow! No shit! <laughs> Kate and Kwrite. So there is a new code formatting plugin that provides a simple way to format your code. It supports Clang format, Rust FMT, Prettier, Go FMT, Dart FMT, and some other formatting backends. It can format untitled in memory as well as saved files. The goal was to provide a smooth, high quality, and configurable code formatting experience to the user while keeping the usage really simple. You can either run it run it manually or set it up so that it runs every time you save. The unified diagnostic view. So basically, instead of every plugin bringing its own UI, there is now a unified component that everybody can use and it's reused by many plugins. This allows to add new linters much more quickly and in fact, Kate already added support for AES lint using this. Then there is LSP inlay hints, which shows virtual text for, as an example, parameter name at the call site of a function which can enhance code readability. Configuration is also now a dialog again instead of an editor tab. I guess people prefer the old way. And Kate will now detach from the terminal after launching, allowing the user to use the terminal session for other things. You can still open it in a blocking mode by specifying dash b as an example Kate dash b on the command line. KDN Live. So there's also a big new feature in KDN Live called nested timelines. Basically, you can select multiple clips in your timeline and group them together in a single clip and then just continue editing as if it was actually a single clip, meaning that you can add apply effects on it, transitions and so on. The whole sequence inside that clip, thus named nested, will update accordingly to all the changes that you make to the grouped clip. You can also later go and edit the nested clips and that change will immediately update to the grouped clip as well. Honestly, Kidian Live is shipping up to be an incredible video editor. Allow me to showcase a feature from the last version actually, since it's not very known but it's just so exciting. So there is a third party application called Glax Animate, which is meant to make animations, simply enough. 
That application has a very good relationship with KDE, and in fact, the developer has said that they're currently working on joining KDE, meaning that KDE might soon have an application to make animations. Okay, in the previous KDE Live update, the ability to open Glax Animate files was added, meaning that you can create an animation, save it to file, and open it in KDE Live without even having to render it. And the coolest part is that if you make any change on the Glax Animate file, that will update live to the kid in live view as well. I mean, come on, this is the coolest stuff. I, I, I'm really excited. I, I'm so excited. Gwen view and ocular. Okay, so there's only one significant change to Gwen view and it's about zoom, which now works much better. On Wayland, you will be able to zoom in and out using the pinch gestures on the touchpad, which is actually a super nice thing to have. And in general, zooming with control scroll on a touchpad will zoom in smoothly instead of doing big steps. So yeah, it's much easier to zoom into images now. The smooth zoom patch was also applied to ocular, meaning that you can now zoom smoothly instead of going by steps when you do control touchpad scroll. And since we're talking about ocular, you can also unlock the sidebar and move it around like on the right side of the application, or you can also leave it floating around. They all float down. Elisa, we don't talk enough about Elisa. It's Kitty's best music player application. If you use it, you know that the application has a giant blurry header that showcases the title of the song, the album art, and the author. Here's the cool thing. If you don't like it, you can now just resize it to be a completely normal header area. You won't be able to see the song title or author, but the application actually looks better to me like this. I don't know. I'm just really into good looking header areas. Sorry. Also, you can now create playlists and save them as .pls files, and you can open .pls files. You can now listen to the radio if you were born in the 20th century, I guess, and most popular stations are included by default. Finally, the frequently played view now just sorts by the amount of times you played each song instead of trying to do some more complex heuristic. File light. You know, the application that you run when you notice that you're running out of disk space and you would like to know why. Now along a super pretty graph showing the size of the folders and subfolders and sub subfolders, you also get a left view with a list of your folders and their sizes. This makes it a bit easier to parse all the files in the directory you're in as the graph does not make that immediately obvious. Now one application that is not in the KDE gear update because it's so new, but it will get in the KDE Gear update. And anyway, it has been published a few days ago, is Ariana, which is KDE's new application, super new, to read EPUB files, which I'm mentioning it because I created it. Then it was mostly developed by Carl Schwann, thanks Carl, and other developers also joined in and gave me a hand, gave car a hand. But, but yeah, I, I, I did something and I'm still working on other stuff on KD Plasma desktop. As an example, currently I'm working on some stuff for e-ink devices and also on floating dialogues and also on a de redesign of the panel settings thanks to another patch. But all of this can only work if I get enough money to make everything work, even the channel actually requires money to run. And about that, I do really want to say thanks to all the Patreons, which you should see here in the last video, the editor forgot to add them in, but I really want to say thanks for everybody. Uh, April is coming to an end and I'm actually not really close to my 700 euros goal which starts to give me a little anxiety, but I I'm sure, I'm sure we we'll get there. If you're able to chip in something, that would be awesome. And thanks to everybody who is helping. Let's get back to the, I feel like I'm out of focus. Itinerary. So do you plan to travel anywhere these weeks? Kitty Itinerary is an application especially meant for phones and available on Android which allows you to upload your train or plane tickets to get all the info they contain. Some recommendations if you're traveling between states that, as an example, have different power plugs and so on. The application has been redesigned for this release and it's now much prettier and much easier to navigate through the information such as the QR code of the ticket that you actually have to show at the airport. Dragon Player. 
This is Katie's video player application and although it's not much used, people usually either use VLC or MPV, I'm MPV, and it wasn't very maintained, in the last year or two it has received a lot of love to make it more appealing to users in the hope to change the status quo. This does apply to this release as well. There has been a major overhaul of the design and the application now uses K hamburger menu, which is Kitty's powerful hamburger menu. The default set of toolbar buttons was also moved to icons only, which is the standard for a video player, with the addition of a clear button. And finally, the application now has a welcome screen, which allows you to either play a file or a stream. By the way, the application comes with a sidebar hidden by default, but it's in the hamburger menu that allows you to change brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation of the video. A very interesting approach, and I guess it could be helpful when playing like very dark movies, changing the brightness. However, it does not work on my computer, so I'm not sure why. <laughs> Casts. C Casts. How do you pronounce it? Casts. So I know that you might not see this application like Casts very often, but there are a lot of these applications that are quite new actually, and slowly becoming better and better, but also more and more used. Casts is Katie's application meant to listen to podcasts. The latest version supports minimizing the application to the system tray. You can change the playback speeds of your podcasts, and you can search with, by the way, a super pretty search bar through your catalog of sub sub subscribed podcasts. <coughs> now, the rest of the things I'll talk about now, I've actually covered just a few days ago, but still, for those who missed that particular video, I feel like I should cover them here as well. Feel free to close the video if you hate repetition, you were warned. Tokodon. Tokodon, Kitty's client for Mastodon, now shows you previous messages you're replying to when you're drafting your surely hateful response. And there's now support for polls, which you could already see in previous versions, but you can now send them as well. Finally, the mobile version has a dedicated search page, whereas the desktop version always has a search bar on the top left. And finally, you can now configure a proxy before logging into the Mastodon account, which is a step you could take for further security. Finally, you can also review the list of full requests in order to be able to click on deny on each single request, except if it's from me, obviously. And yes, I, th that's the same joke I did in the last video too. Oh, YouTube. This is Kitty's YouTube music client. <laughs> it, has gone through, <laughs> it has gone through a complete redesign of the interface and also now has new pretty icon. The application supports searching for music, making playlists and creating them automatically from the, your favorite songs. You have a playback history and you can now share songs with your uh, friends, like if you have any. NeoChat. So NeoChat is a native KDE app for chatting on Matrix. NeoChat improved its design with tweaks that provide a more compact layout and a simpler menu which works better for the collapsed room list. There is also improved video controls and a new command knock. Uh, there is a new command knock room ID to send a knock event to room and you can now edit a prior message in line with the chat pane. Other usability improvements include an overall of the keyboard navigation and shortcuts like control page up and page down that allow you to skip from room to room. Then there is Calendar, which is a modern and highly interactive calendar, uh, calendaring and contact management app that works really well on your computer and mobile phone. Calendar has completely revamped its address book, which is now more functional and easier to use. You can see it here. And you can also edit contacts. And by the way, those contacts are also exposed if you want in the system tray for easier access. PlasmaTube. So PlasmaTube is a video player that allows you to stream YouTube videos directly to your desktop or phone. There has been a redesign here too with the rounded corners in the video preview just like YouTube does and PlasmaTube now protects your privacy as it accesses videos through InVideos, a YouTube frontend that does not require a login blocks tracking and heads and does not require JavaScript. If you do that it means that I'm not getting any money so <gasps> stop it make a donation or something. And finally, 
There are some smaller changes, uh, such as Arc has more options in the welcome screen and you can finally extract StuffFit files, which I did not learn about whilst reading the announcement. I totally knew what StuffFit files are. Totally. <laughs> Thanks everybody for following through and uh, see you in a couple of days with the video. Bye.